All right, so hi everyone, I'm Tracy. I'm a product specialist for I'm Your Doc with CME First Dragon. Um, we also have a, my colleague Matthew on the call as well. So just want to say thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedules to join us on this webinar today. Um, for many years, our clients have asked us to offer a solid telemedicine product and we've finally partnered with I'm Your Doc. Um, as you can imagine, we've had a tremendous influx of questions and requests for demonstrations during this public health emergency that we're all dealing with. Um, we decided, you know, because of that, not only to host just one, but two webinar sessions today to address the influx of questions that we've had. Um, I'm excited to introduce to you today Dana. She's the CEO of I'm Your Doc. Who, she'll be with us today to show you the functionality of our telehealth platform, help you get a better understanding of how everything works, and she'll also be with us to answer any questions that you all might have. Um, so please feel free. Uh, we'll try to address as many of those throughout the demonstration as possible. Um, if you could just type those into the chat. Um, and so that's all from me, uh, Dana. You want to take it away? Great. There we go. Okay, hoping that everyone can see my screen. I just wanted to start talking broadly about um, how telehealth uh, is an important strategy today. Uh, obviously in the time of COVID-19, um, it's pushed the limits for both patients and providers um, and their staff to find a way to communicate with one another. Obviously, telehealth has existed um, and, and remote messaging and monitoring has existed for several years, but the billing has been very limited and very difficult for people to get reimbursed for these kinds of visits. And so it wasn't broadly adopted. And now we find ourselves um, needing it right away. And I'm Your Doc is that urgent solution for the urgent problem. Um, and really, it comes down to that patients have now been asked to stay home. Uh, unless they are having uh, a lot of trouble breathing. And so how do you take care of patients, both for their regular ailments that you would see them otherwise, as well as for um, COVID-19 symptom management and do it remotely. And then also uh, to keep your, the doors of your practices alive um, and open and being able to communicate um, with one another, as well as to bill for the services uh, that, that you'll be rendering during this time of crisis. So I'm Your Doc is set up to uh, fulfill all of those needs and requirements that practices have. Um, and as I mentioned, we can have it standing up extremely easily and very quickly uh, in your practices to, to meet the need today. So broadly, I'm Your Doc um, is HIPAA compliant. As you all know, it's been announced that platforms like FaceTime or Skype can be used uh, to do telehealth and still get billed for it. Uh, or still bill for it, but we all know that those uh, lack of restrictions, especially around patient uh, information and security, will be pulled back and there are already rumblings that they're going to do that within the next few weeks. And so practices are really looking for something that's easy to implement and deploy, but is not only a short-term solution, but a long-term solution. And that's what I Am Your Doc can offer. So on the screen, uh, I'll show you a few ways that uh, practices are engaging with their patients today. On the screen, you'll see uh, my computer on the left. So I'm Your Doc is like Facebook Messenger uh, in the way that you can use it on your desktop uh, or laptop through a browser. I'm running it on Chrome. Safari uh, also works well if you're a Mac user. And then on the right is my, uh, my screen phone. My, the, my phone screen, I mean. Uh, it's an iPhone. It also runs, I'm Your Doc also runs on iPads, tablets, and Android devices. So it's cross-platform. So whatever your patients or your staff and providers use, uh, they, can, they can utilize I'm Your Doc uh, for telehealth and messaging needs. So on the left, um, you can see a very common kind of conversation that patients will have with provider practices that would usually happen on a nurse check-in or an in-clinic visit. And now you can do it over messaging remotely before the telehealth visit uh, begins. So you can see that this patient, and I know that it's my patient because Amanda Jones is bright red, so we visually cue you uh, to, to recognize that as a patient user and not a provider user, 
Jeff and Dana, those are my colleagues, and so they're all in green, like normal. We also allow you to put the ID and the DOB so that you can identify really easily on the platform that you're uh, talking to them uh, via telehealth or messaging. Uh, but that's the Amanda Jones born in 1975, not the Amanda Jones born in 1968, as an example. And the ID, some people ask if that's um, set by on your doc. It's not. That's the ID that, uh, or, or medical record number that you would identify uniquely to your patient. So you set that when you invite the patient uh, to onboard. So you can see the conversation about sending an image of a thyroidectomy incision because the patient is afraid that it's infected. <clears throat> and so this is something that they would obviously make an office appointment for generally. Uh, but now, how do we manage it remotely? And so that's, that kind of messaging is between the nurse and, um, and the patient. And so I'm Your Doc allows you to also set up uh, the messaging between um, your patients and your staff. It does not have to be direct to the provider. Uh, so you, can, you have complete control over how patients interact with your practice. And in this case, they receive quite a bit of information from the patient prior to the telehealth visit. And so the workflow here is that the nurse checks in. They can do it via telehealth or they can do it via text, whatever works well for them. Um, and, then, and then get the information before the doctor actually initiates the telehealth visit. So it mimics the clinic experience both for the patient as well as your staff and providers as well. The telehealth visit is then initiated uh, either by the physician or by the nurse um, by, this, by, by that uh, icon up top. And your patients, and I'll, I'll talk about how patients get connected to you um, and to your practice, but this is my patient list as an example. So if my four o'clock is Amanda Jones, then I want to find Amanda Jones, just like FaceTime where you find Amanda Jones uh, or your mom in your list, and click on that and then start to engage either through messaging or video. So it works the same. We made the workflow super easy so everyone can figure out, including your pair, uh, patients. So when you initiate a, a telehealth call, you'll see me there. It looks on the phone just like a regular um, call. I forgot to sign in, I apologize. So there's the call. Oh, sorry, I talked too long that time. I forgot to sign in, I apologize. So when, when the call gets made, there it is. Let me just mute the, all the microphones. So obviously one is the phone looking at me and then the computer is the other one. So it looks just like a FaceTime call. The picture is clear. You're able to talk to your uh, patients pretty easily. Um, and you can also turn around the screen. So if you as a provider are um, running uh, on your dock and making the calls on an iPad or on a mobile device on the side of your computer and your EHR uh, is in front of you while you take notes during the visit and you have an MRI on your screen, then you can show the patient the MRI while you discuss it with them. Just as an example, uh, patients can also turn the screen so that they can show you their incision that they're worried about or their port or a rash or uh, whatever the case is um, so that they can communicate with you in that way. Importantly, once the visit is over, and I'll just open this up for you, the telehealth visit, uh, it provides, uh, we provide you a telehealth readout and this is what you need ultimately to bill for your visit. And it's time spent with patients. So it's no different than uh, a regular consult that you would have in, um, in a clinic. And this is exportable so that you can actually uh, uh, put it into your chart. We are integrated directly with Centricity, CPS, and CMR, um, Greenway, Intergy, and Prime Suite as an example. Uh, or you can export it in, in a couple different variety of ways. So you can see this export button on the same interface that you just had the call. And you can see the options, PDF, text, or CSV. And so if I had had this conversation around, or perhaps I had the telehealth call and then uh, prescribed antibiotics based on what I saw in that incision, and then asked her to uh, take a prescription, again, all done remotely, then I can put all of that interaction into uh, the chart by attaching a PDF to the chart. This is one way you can do it. So who it was between, dated and time stamped, uh, and 
images included with PDFs, and then here's that call with the duration. So you can attach it to your chart that way if you don't have direct integ integration. The other way that you can do it is through plain text. And of course, with plain text, you can't add images. But with plain text, if it's just text and the call, you can actually copy and paste this into the body of your note. So if you uh, are talk, uh, have a, no a soap note or a note related to the telehealth call, this is the, um, the actual uh, conversation as well as the video console duration there. So that can be copy and pasted into the body of the note. So we try to make it easy for you to export the conversations, care plan changes, those kinds of things over I'm Your Doc into your chart um, as best as we can if you don't have direct integration. So beyond that, in terms of um, mobile devices, I just wanted to point out a few, few things because most of the patients utilize I'm Your Doc on their mobile device, as well as almost all of our clinicians um, and support staff. So you can see that on I'm Your Doc, you can uh, see the images, you can have the telehealth call. Now I want you to note that this is the patient account and unlike on the provider or the, uh, the healthcare staff side, they have access to start a video consult, but on the side of the patient, they don't have the video icon because we clearly don't want patients to begin a telehealth call or a video consult uh, from their end. So it's controlled that way. If you use FaceTime as an example, they have your phone number and they can call you anytime they want. Skype is the same way. So that's why you want a HIPAA compliant environment that has all the controls for your practice uh, so that you can, again, maintain the uh, emphasis on how you organizationally want to communicate with the patient and them with you. And with I'm Your Doc, it's important to notice that when they took this picture of the thyroidectomy and sent it, there's a camera icon right there. And so when you use I'm Your Doc camera, it allows you to send an HD photo uh, and stays in the HIPAA compliant environment. So for example, uh, right now you take pictures uh, all the time with Instagram or iMessage or Facebook, and all of those are stored into files, uh, both on the cloud as well as on your device, in your camera roll, your gallery. Clearly, if we're taking a picture that has sensitive PHI on it, perhaps a patient, a new patient to your office, takes a picture of their insurance card through I'm Your Doc and sends it to you. You don't want that kind of personal information out there. And so when you take a picture using the camera on I'm Your Doc, it allows you to uh, it allows you to store it in the HIPAA compliant environment, not on your actual device. So both for sender and receiver, the images and or documents don't download to the device. They can only be viewed. That's important for HIPAA compliance, clearly. From the perspective of the, um, of the, uh, uh, just trying to move the control panel out of the way, out of the, the perspective of the web portion of it that's running on Chrome or Safari as an example, obviously you don't take a picture with your computer and so instead we allow you to attach a document. So we had a question uh, in our last webinar about consent and getting consent from your patients for telehealth visits. Most of the consents, including consent for copay, have been waived right now. Um, but again, if you're trying to set uh, precedents and have long-term strategy, you probably still want to get those consents so that when copays come back in, which again, we all know that they will very quickly on the private insurance side especially, uh, that you will already have that documentation. So you can actually use I'm Your Doc to have your scheduling person, your medical records person, attach the document, and you can see that here, send it to the patient, and you can see, please respond with your consent. And this is a consent form, it can be a PDF, it can be a Word document that basically helps uh, have the patient read it so that they can see that they're consenting to having telehealth visits, um, and then have the patient respond that they consent. Now, when that happens, um, you, as part of a contract with I'm Your Doc, are given seven years of archived messaging storage. And so we never delete the record, so you always have it. Um, and you can see that here, I'll just show you. So once you gain that consent, 
administratively, you ha then have access to, you know, please respond, here's the document, and then that they consent. You also obviously have access to all the history of the telehealth calls, any images, and any of the conversations between patient and front office, between front office and your staff members, um, as well as uh, patients to the docs themselves. And this is all included here. Lastly, um, it's important, I think, that people uh, recognize uh, that I'm your doc is not just for patient communication with practice, but again, as I mentioned, lots of staffs are really down tooling and um, removing some of their staff for a period of time, furloughing them so that they um, are working on a skeleton crew because they're not getting as much revenue coming in, um, or uh, providers or staff have to self-isolate or quarantine themselves because they have they either feel unwell or they um, have come into contact with someone. So how do you keep your office running if people are working remotely, especially when you're dealing with PHI? And so in this way, you can have conversations with your staff without being cryptic, being able to talk to one another, even if one of your staff members or providers has to work from home for 14 days or whatever it is. And this is a good example of a real conversation between a PA and an ortho, uh, and the PA um, said, you know, can you take a look at this x-ray? And the doc was between hospital and clinic. And so the, the PA actually sent a photo of the broken arm on a Dell computer screen. So they used I'm your doc, because again, when he took this picture and it had the PHI listed at the top of the screen, which clearly um, they cut out when they sent it to us as an example, but they, they could have that on their device and take the picture because it didn't store on their camera roll. And then the doc could review that on the go uh, and, and make clinical decisions about, yes, that needs surgery, let's schedule them today. And so that all streamlines uh, clinical care going forward. People take pictures of documents, of lab reports, of med lists, off the screens, right? those kinds of things that the, the doc isn't in a position to sit down at the EHR, log in, and look at those. So it streamlines that kind of conversation. And because I'm your doc has read verifications when you send a message, uh, then, then you don't need to wonder if they listen to a voicemail, voicemail or an email, you, you know for sure that they've seen your message. And it looks like this, you know, if we sent a message, thanks, you get a real time uh, push notification on the actual device. So it looks and feels, oops, that's the wrong person. I keep forgetting who I'm doing. So it looks and feels like real time messaging. So there's the push notification. And it doesn't show the body of the text because obviously we don't want PHI on your lock screen to show up, but it, but it has the same feel and convenience of text messaging. You can see also that just like iMessage, you get a counter uh, waiting for you. So if you need responsiveness from patients, they get real-time notifications. They don't have to use usernames and passwords. They're always logged in because they can just use their biometric. So either their thumbprint, a four-digit PIN or facial recognition, depending on the user preference. And that goes for your providers and staff as well, using it on the device, because no one can remember usernames and passwords, and certainly not for communication. Um, so I've been in the app within the last minute, so it didn't ask me for my thumbprint, but essentially once I read that, it changes that it's been read. So that's basic functionality uh, of how both the telehealth and the messaging can improve workflow, uh, especially remotely um, for all of your staff and providers. So usually the last, uh, the following question is, okay, so how do we get our patients connected and do they have to download an application? So I'll show you both from the um, administrative side on how patients get connected and then I'll show you what the patients actually see when they get an invite from your office to to um, be able to accept telehealth calls and or messages. So you can see this is a very easy dashboard. You can add patients in bulk, meaning 50 invites at a time. So if you have a patient population and you say, we're gonna send you this invite, um, this works particularly well for family and peds as an example, because they have uh, patients make appointments all the time, OB is another one. So they can send many invitations at once and the patients can receive them so you don't have to do 10,000 individual uh, invites. But you can also do, and people successfully, that when they make a, an appointment, 
Um, we're going to switch that to a telehealth appointment. So you want the patient to be onboarded onto I'm Your Doc. So for your administrative staff, so this would be your schedulers or your MAs, whoever you task with it, it can be multiple people. The only thing that they need to know to onboard a patient is their first name, last name, email, and phone number. That's it. Um, when they have that, and you might have that already in your system, most likely you do, uh, you can send an invitation to the patient via email, SMS, or both. And then, of course, we uh, recommend strongly that you put the date of birth, uh, and the MRN into the uh, patient record so that, again, when you're about to initiate a telehealth or a chat with the patient, you know that it, you can verify that that's the right Amanda Jones uh, using our example from before. And then use your templates, um, uh, which give the patient a welcome message, which you can customize. You can customize it per provider or per type of patient. So it gives you a lot of um, leeway, and then the patient sees this. You know, they gave a lot of um, instructions about what this might be used for. This is where you're going to get telehealth and those kinds of things. And then, as I mentioned before, you have a great amount of control over how your patients interact with your office. So, for instance, uh, Dr. Sewell only wanted these four people: his MA, uh, the front office scheduler, and uh, two uh, two sorry, two MAs, his PA, and his front office scheduler. Uh, whereas the oncology um, patients only had a single user that they were going to be connected to. So you can, you can do that however you want. Um, and again, you can customize it per provider. Now, once, the, once that invite is sent, and you saw it took about 30 seconds to fill in that, those uh, few, few steps, the invite goes out to the patient, and this is what it looks like. So clearly, it would be your clinic or facility name instead of Summit View Clinic. And the first barrier to patients getting onto an application is, where's my player app store, and what's my username and password? Um, and so we overcome that and, and help the patient to do that with a tiny URL here where it says, tap this to get started. So when they do that, the patient is, it automatically determines for the patient if they're on an Android or, or an iPhone or an iPad or a tablet. Um, and in this case, I'm on an iPhone device or an Apple device. And so it says download on the App Store automatically. So I don't need to find my App Store and I don't need to search for I'm Your Doc on the App Store. It's too cumbersome for patients. And so we just give them a, a button to tap, essentially. And when it's, uh, the, if they're on an Android or a tablet, it would say download to the Play Store. So once they tap that, this is the screen that they see. And so they can accept an, the invite that you just sent. And the second barrier to people onboarding onto communication systems and patient portals would be a good example, that you need username and passwords when it's web-based. And people just don't remember those or don't wanna use them and certainly not in communication because it should be easy and quick. And so when they accept your invite, they can accept it through their own mobile device number, which everyone knows, or through their email, and they get sent a six-digit PIN, 260033, which they put in there, and then they're in. That's it. So then the patient will be automatically connected to the people you wanted to be in the clinic. So your clinic uh, staff and your uh, provider or nurses can communicate with them and get the information they need and to begin a telehealth uh, uh, visit. So I'd love to turn it over to questions. Um, but again, there are lots of, uh, you know, in conclusion, there are lots of different um, uh, things that you can choose to onboard into your office. Some of them have lots of good strengths and some of them are more limited. Some are HIPAA compliant and some are not. And so you can make a choice in your um, decision about what to stand up. Um, I'm Your Doc is HIPAA compliant end to end. Uh, we've been out in the market for six and a half years, so we're well established, and it's a one-stop shop for uh, staff and provider communication, patient to practice communication, and telehealth. Thanks. All right, great. Thank you, Dana. Um, so we've had a couple of interesting questions here. Um, we'll start with this one um, asking about what happens when patients uh, try to contact you after hours. Uh, yeah, great question. I didn't talk about that. So 
there, there are two ways, particularly with um, providers, and maybe I'll just sign into a, a staff account here so you can see, give me one moment. So we have uh, out of office responses. So in the, um, in the settings, both on the computer and on the phone, you have out of office, uh, out of office responses. So here you can set it. Um, so it's similar to setting a holiday on your email. You can put whatever auto, auto uh, excuse me, auto reply that you want. It's the same on the phone here, out of office. Um, and so you can set whatever you want, uh, select when it will turn off. Um, and so you, your staff, for instance, who might be connected all the time with the patient will be able to set the out of office at the end of the day. Uh, if it's emergency, call 911, we'll be back at 8 a.m., right? Those kinds of things. Uh, so the, the message still comes through. So similar to when you do out of office on your email, you still get all the messages. You just, uh, the, it's just that the sender um, will get a pop back that says you're out of office. And so with staff and, and nurse and MA accounts, you can set out of office when you no longer are working for both your, your, your other colleagues as well as patients so that they have uh, the expectation of appropriate communication time. And with doctors, there's a stra there are two strategies um, in, in how you get patients and doctors communicating without uh, patients having access to the doctor whenever they want. Um, and one is that the patient is added to the provider, um, added to their contact list before the telehealth visit so that the telehealth visit can be initiated and had. And then the provider is then removed and it's a two-click process. To add is one click and to remove is another. Um, by the MA as an example. So they so that the um, the provider individual doesn't have any access to the patient and vice versa uh, after the telehealth visit. And then it all gets triaged or worked through the front office of the nurse. The second strategy is that you can have generic users, like um, if it was Dr. Jackson's office, first name Jackson, last name telehealth. Um, and so during the telehealth visits, Dr. Jackson is signed into that user. They have all of their telehealth visits that day over the telehealth generic user. And then they set out of office um, and say, this isn't where you'll get any response, right? You can set that so that any patients who are connected to the generic telehealth user uh, aren't contacting the doctor directly. So those are the two strategies. Okay, um, and for users that um, end up leaving the practice for whatever reason, can the license be tra transferred to another user within the practice and how often per year can that be done? Yeah, so uh, when, and this is particularly relevant for specialists, uh, referring specialists, uh, referred specialists or, or surgical groups, um, that they need just a period of time to communicate with the patient. And so when you look at your patient list, so let me just expand that so you can see it better. This red uh, X, is that essentially, when I'm no longer needing to see Roger Gregson, or he's left our practice as a patient because you know we've done the surgery, we've done all the follow-ups and he no longer needs to be with us, I can um, remove him or disable him. Now that, that removes him from our practice so he can't contact our practice through I'm Your Doc anymore, but Roger Gregson keeps his account similar to Facebook. I can remove friends from my Facebook contact list and then add new ones as I go. So it's similar with I'm Your Doc that the patient maintains the license and then can be connected to the next provider that they see. Okay, great, thank you. Um, what documentation is required for E&M coding purposes? Um, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's not my, uh, I'm not a coding specialist or a billing specialist. Um, there are definitely modulators that show that it's a telehealth visit in your EHR and there are G codes related to that that already existed prior to this. Um, including store and forward. So if you make consultative decisions based on still photos, like the thyroidectomy picture, um, you can bill for that also. Um, but there, there are so many, it changes literally every day. Um, and so for CMS patients, so Medicare and Medicaid, the HHS site is the place to refer to. Um, it's all listed there uh, under COVID-19 telehealth. And then, um, and then with your private insurers, generally they're putting out, again, it changes every day. And so generally your private insurers will have that information ready for you that they can send to you that you can refer to. Okay, great. And as a behavioral health 
counselor, can I use the telemed component for individual and group therapy sessions? So I Knew Doc um, has limited uh, uh, telehealth visits to one, one person and one uh, healthcare person. So uh, for HIPAA compliance controls and reasons, we haven't allowed it to uh, have group messaging or group video at this time at least. All right, great. Well, I'm not seeing, uh, I'm sure that you all will think of some other questions and we are more than happy to answer those for you and help. Um, and so if you will just change to the closing slide here, we'll have our contact information. I just wanna say thank you again to Dana for conducting the demonstration for us today. Thank you, Matt, for being on the call as well. Um, if we can answer any questions that you all might have, um, this is our email to contact us here, the secure messaging at firstdragon.com, and there's also a contact number. Um, our biggest question is how quickly can um, you know, this be deployed, and we have a promise of 36 hours or less. Um, and so that's generally our biggest question, and if you all think of anything else, please feel free to contact us here at secure messaging at First Dragon. All right, thank you guys all for taking the time out of your busy schedules for um, to join us today and have a good rest of your week, okay?